Hey guys, it's Bub here, and in this video, we're going to be seeing how many virtual machines we can install inside of each other. My goal for this video is to try to install Windows XP on Windows Vista, on Windows 7, on Windows 8, on Windows 10, and of course on my host, Windows 11. That would mean we are virtualizing Windows inside of each other five times. Is it possible? I have no clue. Over a year ago, I did a video on installing Windows ME on Vista on 8 on 10 or something like that. But back when I did that video, I didn't have as powerful hardware as I do today. Back then, I was still using a 2015 MacBook Pro, but now I have an Intel Core i7-10700K with 32 gigabytes of RAM and much more storage space. So with the better hardware, how many times can we truly virtualize Windows inside of one another? Let's find out. The first operating system we're going to install is Windows 10. So we're going to just use 21H1 because of course my host is already Windows 11. At the time of making this video, it is the latest build 22,000. 160. So it is the latest version. As for hard disk space, I really have no clue what we're going to need, so I'm just going to give it 280 gigabytes. As for our actual hardware, 2 gigabytes of RAM is certainly not enough, so we're just going to give it 20,000 megabytes. I think that's like 19 and a half gigabytes. And as for our processor cores, I have 8 cores, so we're going to give this 6. And one of the most important things that we need is to enable the virtualize Intel VTX because that will allow us to run a virtual machine inside of a virtual machine. And of course, this should just be our regular Windows 10 install. This is like we're creating a just standard Windows virtual machine. Right now, there's nothing really weird that we need to worry about. All right, so our copy of Windows 10 has just installed in VMware Workstation. And now we're going to be using VMware Player simply for the fact that it's free and it's easy to download. I'm not using VirtualBox because I've tried VirtualBox on nested virtualization before and it simply doesn't work as good as VMware does. So we're just going to go ahead and just Google VMware Player and go ahead and download it from VMware's website. While we wait for Workstation Player to install, we're going to go ahead and copy a Windows 8 ISO from my network. That's all we have to do. And now that VMware Workstation Player has installed to our machine, we can go ahead and wait for my ISO to copy, and we'll be on our way to install Windows 8 inside of Windows 10 inside of Windows 11. So going ahead and opening up Workstation Player, we can go ahead and just use it for free because we don't plan on actually using this for anything important. We're going to go ahead and select our ISO that we just copied over, and we're going to go ahead and use easy install for everything that we possibly can because that just takes less time and it's more automated. As for our RAM, we gave our ho we gave this host machine 19 and a half, so we're going to give this 16 gigabytes. And then as for CPU cores, we are going to go ahead and give it six cores just like our main machine. Now, as long as we really don't reach that six core mark, we shouldn't have any issues. So we will get a warning message saying running VMware player in a virtual machine will result in degraded performance. We're just going to not show that message again and simply let VMware boot. All right, so now Windows 8 has completely installed on our VM. So as of right now, we have our host, Windows 11, virtualizing Windows 10, which is virtualizing Windows 8. Let's go ahead and full screen Windows 10. And of course, Windows 8 is going to take some time to adjust. But while it adjusts, let's go ahead and copy the installer for Workstation Player and just paste that in our Windows 8 VM. Of course, while VMware Workstation is installing and kind of freaking out my entire computer, I'm going to go to my network folder and go ahead and bring over a Windows 7 ISO. And now just because now space is going to become really a concern, we're going to just go ahead and delete the ISOs that we're done with. So we're done with the Windows 8.1 ISO, and for that matter, we're done with this version of the player. So we can go ahead and delete that from our Windows 10 VM. Now at this point, when we have Windows 7 virtualized in my testing, that's when we started to run into some problems. It is going to be ridiculously slow, ridiculously laggy. We might run into some freezing. I have no clue. but. That's what we're here for. We're here to test it out and see what we can do. Now that our VM has all of its specs set up, it should, in theory, be ready to boot and install Windows 7. 
but I have a feeling it's going to take an extremely long time to do so because we are now, this is our third layer deep in virtualization. We're virtualizing 10, we're virtualizing 8, now we're virtualizing 7. So we are really deep in our virtualization layers, and this is where things start to get really slow. Once again, we get that message. It says running VMware player in a virtual machine will result in degraded performance. But what it doesn't know is we're running VMware player in a virtual machine in a virtual machine. So let's go ahead and try something else while this installs. So in order to just save space and for compatibility reasons, we're going to use VMware player that I have on here. We're going to go ahead and create a separate Windows 7 version so we can get compatibility with Workstation Player 14. What we're doing now is installing Windows 7 so we get that compatibility with the Workstation Player 14. But we're also going to go ahead and get Vista and XP installed. So because as we saw, this is really unusable Windows 7. So I really don't want to be installing Vista and XP there. So we're going to get Vista and XP installed in this VM and then copy over Vista and XP and hope that everything works. I have no clue if it's going to, but it might. All right, so our virtual machine inside of Windows 8 is currently restarting after its install. It's been quite a long time for that. But our main other Windows 7 virtual machine, the one that we're gonna set up Vista and XP on, is all ready to go. So since player 16 does not work on Windows 7, we're gonna just go ahead and run player 14 because that, I know for a fact, works on Windows 7. Again, even the startup on our Windows 8.1 version, it takes forever. I mean, it's, it's laggy, it's slow, which is why we're configuring our other virtual machines on a not so laggy virtual machine. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and open Workstation 14 player and of course continue with our regular and we can see it looks pretty much exactly the same, so I'm not too worried about being out of date. Home Premium, once again, simple as that. I am going to give it 2 gigabytes of RAM, even though that this Windows 7 VM only has 2 gigabytes. We're going to go ahead and run it, and of course we get that same message, but that's okay. And this host does not support VTX, and I know exactly why. So if this is for some reason confusing to anyone, this is our main project. We're virtualizing Windows 10, 7, and 8. However, because Windows 7 on this is virtually unusable, that we're setting up Vista and XP on this machine, and then we're gonna transfer it over to that virtualized version of Windows 7, so it's not that laggy. On another note, our Vista machine is getting ready to virtualize Windows XP, so I'm simply just going to go ahead and, of course, go on the network and get ourselves a Windows XP ISO. Let's get this ready now. So we'll go ahead into our documents and virtual machines and delete this and our Windows 7 ISO since we're just going to be copying over the one that's ready to go. And so if we're actually going to be using this Windows 7 virtual machine, Let's go ahead and turn Windows 7 Basic back on. So let's go ahead and just try VirtualBox. I don't know if it's going to work. Now this is version 4.0.36, so it should be compatible with Vista, but the setup wizard ended prematurely for some reason. I don't know why. So let's go ahead and run Virtual PC 2007. The first thing that is is it is taking a relatively long time Okay, there we go. So we actually do have to capture an ISO image. It doesn't show up automatically, I thought it did. Again, we can't use easy install because this is virtual PC, but I'm gonna go ahead and set up XP because this is gonna take a while. All right, so our Windows XP installation has finally just about finished. Um, the mouse is glitching a little bit, which is understandable. I mean, it's being virtualized inside of two virtual machines at the moment. So when we copy it over, it should already be ready to just go ahead and run. However, the first thing we need to do is get this into our virtual machine. And I don't know if we can just drag it in because we're running it two layers deep and just like I thought we can't. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put this on that shared ISO folder, hopefully. Oh, it's only 33 gigabytes. So I'm gonna copy that over to the shared ISO folder and then I'm just gonna go on to here and just copy it from there. 
All right, now that this virtual machine has actually copied into this ISO folder, we can just reload it and make sure everything is here. And we should just be able to copy this to our desktop. And I don't know how long this is gonna take. All right, so it is finally copied over. I can go ahead and close the ISO folder. And I don't think we should open it that way. I think we actually have to go through and open it through the workstation player, but I guess we could do it either way. Let's go ahead and open a virtual machine. Or actually, I should probably remove this one so it doesn't get confused because they do have the same name. Let's go ahead and open a new virtual machine and open that VMX file. And since they're both on VMware Workstation Player 16, there shouldn't be any compatibility problems. And I copied it. All right, so we are unable to provide all graphics features. Blah, 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 blah. We can go ahead and just continue and attempt to resume without those graphics features. Here is XP and Vista. We need to unmaximize Windows 7. XP and Vista are working. We just need to unmaximize Windows 7. And I have no clue how to do that if we are this stuck. Windows 10 is responsive. Windows 8 is responsive. I don't know if I can click into Windows 7. I mean, what do we have to lose? Let's go ahead and just restart this virtual machine. It might not even re- oh, I just restarted Windows 8. I did not mean to re- I meant to restart Windows 7, not 8. Alright, let's go ahead and see if this is still in a suspended state or if something happened. I'm kind of hoping that something happened, so I can just go ahead and start from scratch. But it's probably still in a- oh, no, it is powered off. So let's go ahead and start this up. We're going to start up Windows 7, then we'll hopefully be able to start up Windows Vista, and then XP. Alright, so I have- I've gotten Windows 7 to run, so Windows 7 is booted. So right now we have Windows 11 virtualizing Windows 10, virtualizing Windows 8, virtualizing Windows 7, which is trying to virtualize Windows Vista, but I have not gotten Vista to post. I've let it run for probably about 10 minutes. It hasn't posted, nothing has really shown up on the display. It's stayed this color, and I can't get it to really boot past this. But earlier we had it kind of virtualized where it showed it and it had XP running too. So I don't know if you would count that as a success or not, but it's definitely way farther than we got in my last virtualizing VM Inception video, and I'm happy where we are today. Why you would need to do this is really beyond me, but it's a cool experiment that I definitely enjoyed doing today. With that being said, if you like this video, make sure to subscribe if you're new around here as I do all kinds of different technology videos, including device restorations. And make sure you hit that like button and comment down below. And with that being said, I'll see you all in the next one.